Thank you guys for allowing me to be here. And I thank Nikolai um, from California, who's a, um, for those of you that have met him, he's a, a young entrepreneur and a patient um, who's become a good friend and part of a project that we're working on at the foundation. So to set this up and to try to keep you on time, so the Coffin Foundation doesn't fund pet medical research. Um, that has nothing to do with why I'm here, but what we do is um, the foundation is interested in economic growth. Uh, and as all of you know, unfortunately, the healthcare costs in the country are killing us. Um, and unfortunately, healthcare outcomes aren't improving, so we're dying as well. Um, in our interest, we do fund a lot of research, and so we, for the last couple of years, have been funding research to try to understand the policy barriers in the space of reducing costs and improving outcomes, and published a paper called um, Valuing Innovation in Healthcare. If you can go to Kaufman.org to see the paper, um, brought together a number of scientists, patients, economists, et cetera, uh, to create the paper, but at the same time, it's just been occurring to me over the last couple of years how important not only the patients are, but unfortunately, as you'll see, Susan Love says this in the documentary, we're, you know, we're all patients. It's just a matter of when. Um, and unfortunately, unless you're in the system, you don't know how broken the system is. You guys, I'm speaking to the choir, I know. Um, and so we did something that we don't normally do, and we found a Hollywood producer, and we created a documentary. Uh, the documentary is going to be soft launched next Friday in LA, in Hollywood. And um, our hope, uh, we have to keep it under wraps until December because we've submitted it to Sundance Film Festival and are trying to get it on HBO and PBS, so if any of you have contacts in either one of those places. But the whole point of the documentary, we realized that nobody was ever going to understand any of this unless we created a story that touched everyone's heart, but we also kind of threw all the policy stuff in there at the same time. And so the documentary is built around a couple that I met, um, both of whom happen to be entrepreneurs, um, wildly successful so they can do things that normal people can't do, but it's a story of um, parents. And um, as any of you, I'm sure, know just as well as I do, if you have cancer and you're going to die, or if you have children that have a rare disease that has no cure, those people don't really care about HIPAA. They are willing to put their data out to do anything. and. That's why we're telling the story through the lens of parents and through the lens of people who um, really are trying to solve some things in the system. So just, just a comment I want to make before showing you the, the trailer. This is just the trailer. It's an hour-long documentary. Um, the film is a story of three realities in the United States today. The patient advocate's role in driving changes in policy and popular sent sentiment. We saw this in the AIDS movement and the hope for the same in what we show through the documentary is both the pediatric and the rare disease movement. And again, th we're simply using that as a lens. It's the same problems for everybody. Um, the Myelin Repair Foundation, the Michael J. Fox Foundation, Susan Love and the Army of Women who are all depicted in the documentary are pursuing models of patient-driven R&D partnerships with academic and private sector scientists. These models, which are intent on utilizing on utilizing patient focus to accelerate research outcome while also driving policy changes through their unique funding models have grown significantly in the United States as well as around the world and are starting to achieve critical outcomes. Last but not least, this documentary underscores the story of the Hempels, who represent a patient-parent conducted R&D model. The intent of this documentary is to underscore the need for accelerating the alternative pathways from discovery to curing patients. Um, we focus on essentially three or four different specific policy areas as an outcome, um, supporting patients having full and automatic access to their own health data, uh, the need for immediate sharing of data, 
um, and the need to increase funding in the area of rare diseases. Um, at the NIH alone, as you guys know, there's about $95 billion a year in um, health research. At the NIH, they've increased the focus on rare diseases, and they're funded at $25 million. $95 billion a year. We have 7,000 rare diseases, and we have $25 million that go into that space. Um, most people that know the quantified self space and who know the personalized medicine space agree that if we could really understand rare disease more, all of the lessons relative to rare disease would go to the rest of us. Um, so that's why we've done the documentary. So I, I was thrilled to have the opportunity simply to show you guys a trailer. Uh, we'll, we will be posting some further information about this on the Faster Cures website. For anybody that's not familiar, Faster Cures is a, um, I call it a platform philanthropy uh, that supports lots of other philanthropists and collaborations across philanthropy. Um, and I work very closely with them. So, Kevin, would you show the trailer? Up until they were three years old, the girls were just going through the normal process, getting their vaccinations and regular checkups, and they were healthy. Our life was perfect. And then the day came where we found out that they had enlarged spleens. If you have symptoms early in life, like they did, the average lifespan is probably about 10 years. There's nothing worse as a parent than to hear, your child's dying and there's nothing you can do you come to find out there are no drugs, you know, I, there's nothing. Of the 7,000 diseases or so that affect the human family, there are treatments available for about 500 of them. I really hate the word patient because we're all patients. Until you're touched by a disease, you may not realize that there is no department of cures. Just like entrepreneurs, at the beginning, they didn't know what they didn't know. They don't want to be entrepreneurs in this space, but they have to. I'm just a mom. I just want to treat my kids. I want to try to save their lives. Dramatic change only happens when outsiders come in. Individuals can drive change. If you just don't get moving and start taking action, then the inevitable is going to happen. You're, you know, our kids are going to die. There's enormous hope enormous opportunity. It is a matter of will. The answers are in us. They're, they're somewhere in us. From a social point of view, this is the time we all need to really be together and working on things together. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to show you uh, the documentary. As I said, we are doing private screenings. We've got a private screening in LA next weekend. Um, mm -hmm. There's a group in DC that have tracked me down and they're planning a um, screening in Washington DC, I think in February, and are working with Faster Cures to do that. I'm happy to um, lend the documentary to anyone else that wants to do their own screening. Mm -hmm. um, we can't. Um, charge for it. As I said, we can't do large public screenings until after December, but anybody that wants to just um, contact me. I'm Lisa with an E, L-E-S-A, Mitchell on Twitter, um, and my email address is lmitchell at kaufman.org, um, and I get hundreds of thousands of emails and I try to respond to them all. <laughs> so, any, any questions? No? Okay, great. Thank you.